Now I'll have to cut the side out right here to relieve the pressure on these uh, sides of the main uh, bottom half of the pump housing to re relieve the pressure so I can pull it out because unlike a Copeland scroll, the Copeland scroll has holes in it right here and they go all the way out through the outer housing and you have these uh, four pins, one for each of these, pressed in and then it's welded around on the outside and that's how it holds this in. This one here doesn't have any of those. Uh, see it has like wedges right here so when the housing is made you just use a hydraulic press and just press this all the way in so in order to remove it and relieve the pressure I had to cut that piece out and as well cut a relieving slit right there now if you can see it comes right out that it moved. there you go you can see the pressure has been relieved and it's loosened its housing so we'll pull that out and we'll have a closer look well, I finally got it out. I have to completely cut the compressor housing in half because you cannot s slide out the bottom section of the pump housing or the pump itself out through the top because the, you have this part right here which interferes with the motor rotor. So when this is assembled at the factory, before the rotor is inserted into here, you have this part put on. So it's this part, this part, motor rotor, and you get this uh, eccentric counter shaft weight pressed on. So in order to slide the stator off and everything, you have to disconnect it from right here. And you also have this aluminum retainer thing with these uh, like press-in fittings, where it just presses into the whole housing and keeps it centered. You can see more counterweights in the rotor shaft right here. This is where your bottom main bearing is, and this is your oil pump. It's just a spiral screw there. You can see it right there. It goes out, right out the top of the rotor up here and into the moving scroll. And you just have a uh, spiral in there that sucks oil up and sprays it up in the bottom of the housing. Not much too. You have your bottom bearing mount. You got some left over polyester oil. This is your, where your service port goes on. You got your rotor lock right there. If you want to add oil to it or I don't know why you need that for me. Attach the second discharge to it. I mean, intake to it, but I don't know. I'm not a uh, HVAC expert, but anyway. And here you can also see one of the other problems with it. You see, there's these four, sc three screws holding it in, and one of the screws has vibrated out, and I did not remove that. And it's floating in the bottom, which I'll remove it and show you. Got the stator removed off the rest of the assembly. And uh, here is the small screw that vibrated out of the bottom main bearing, which would go in right here from the bottom. So that's one of the failures for it. Didn't really cause any problems, but it shouldn't be like that. So, but the reason all the main windings are short, I thought it was a problem with the plug right there, but it isn't. And it turns out this compressor has been fairly used. It's just. For some reason, they put it back on a pallet and they uh, sealed it up. I'm guessing po possibly a factory recall or something or other. But if you look at the rotor, you can see that severe discoloration, an indicator of extreme heat. And these windings, they're just burned up. They smelt burnt, the oil smells burnt, everything. So it's pretty much the insulation and the windings just burned up because of the, I'm guessing, a locked rotor situation. Possibly due to the fact that both of the bearings are fairly scored, probably the one in here as well is scored quite badly because that one takes a lot of the sideways thrust load. So I will do a more detailed video of the scroll itself and this assembly, which I'm going to keep this and try running it as an air motor so you can look forward to seeing a video on that. Stator is quite nice and large. I'm going to Take a grinder, just slice most of the ends off and pound the copper out of it and that's going to be the end of it, so. Yeah. It's quite a lot of work it goes into taking one of these apart. You got the ends of the windings for the stator both cut off. This will be the top here, you got your three wires for your power, you got your common start and run windings. That right there is a Clutton device, your thermal overload. Here's the bottom one. 
wasn't that difficult cutting apart. Now I just to punch out each one of the individual fuel linings that's left of them. That'll be the end of this scrapping the stator. That fairly easily if you cut the, the windings low enough and flush with the steel. You just tap it right out. Hopefully, these will just slide out now. Yep, just like that. Test these a little more. These are the windings that have been burned out. You can see they're all black and the they have expanded this way they're so tight in there compared to the other ones. See just how black the copper is, the black around the copper is burned. So that yeah, you get the point that I'll finish doing that. Quite dark, even though this was red. Black around this, it's still darker than it normally would be. Well, I got the copper all pulled out completely from the Stator, there it is. Not too bad, got a decent amount of it in there, which is good. So, separate off the mylar strips off of it. With my scrap here, just kind of picky on that copper. At this point, it's all soaked in polyester oil. It's left of the stator, and I'm just going to leave the the rest of the mylar strips on this because it's just shred steel and they don't care, so it's good. It adds a little extra weight. Not that it really matters because they don't really any weigh anything, but... So, at the start of this video, when I got this compressor, I thought it was brand new because it was on a pallet and it was uh, sealed off and it had uh, five pounds of um, pressure in it. I thought it was nitrogen. It might still be nitrogen in it, but... Or it is um, five pounds of uh, our 410 refrigerant left over on it because if you think about this a bit more further, see the top of it, you can see this, the, the tubing is bent off to the left, and here's the where the refrigerant would go in on the side. You can see the tubing's bent down, so when this was installed in the unit, you had a You know, something like that. So you had your, your uh, discharge going off to the. Well, if you look at it like this way, going off to the right, and your uh, where your refrigerant would go in came up from the bottom. So that makes sense. I'm guessing it has something to do with the bearings, possibly, or uh, just the rotor locked up in it and it just burned out the windings. So I don't know why you would uh, reseal it because to normally all the back compressors I see they're all just open but I'm guessing they when they removed it from the unit they pinched 
the lines and just cut them to possibly uh, keep the unit sealed and you just swap out the compressor and, or something like that or possibly do uh, maybe warranty or something like that if they send it to the factory they have to keep it sealed to keep moisture out of it so they could like test it further and why it failed but anyhow that didn't happen it ended up at the tip so hope you enjoyed this video and I don't get much of these compressors this is the only the third one I've gotten so far in a few years so we'll do some more fun videos with the, the scroll compressor head with the scrolls on it and moving scrolls try to run it as an air motor so hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching